On the screen, we have two animations. One representing a heart in atrial fibrillation, the other for comparison showing a heart in a sinus rhythm. At a glance, the two look fairly similar. In both, the atrium is filling from the vena cava and pulmonary veins, and from there, the blood is flowing down through the tricuspid and mitral valves into the ventricles. The ventricles are then contracting, squeezing the blood from the heart to produce our cardiac output. However, if we look more closely, we can see that there are some differences between these two hearts. In the sinus rhythm, the atrium are contracting at regular intervals, which is pushing the blood down into the ventricles. In atrial fibrillation, rather than contracting, the atrium are fibrillating, by which we mean they are beating very rapidly and regularly. Really, they're just shaking, which isn't helping to push the blood down into the ventricles. The second obvious difference between the two hearts can be seen in the ventricles. The ventricles in the sinus rhythm are contracting at regular intervals, while the ventricles in our AF animation are contracting at irregular intervals. These are the two defining characteristics of a heart in atrial fibrillation. Atrium that are fibrillating and ventricles that are contracting at irregular intervals. To understand why this is occurring, we must look at how electrical activity is being conducted within our two hearts. The difference between our two hearts is much more obvious when we look at how electrical impulses are being conducted through them. In a healthy heart, electrical impulses are regular and organised, flowing through the atrium so as to cause contraction of the chambers. In this example of AF, the electrical impulses are not arising from the sinus node, but from the roots of the pulmonary veins. Conduction is rapid and irregular, causing the atrium to shake rather than contract. In the sinus rhythm, the AV node is activated regularly by electrical impulses from the sinus node, leading to the ventricles contracting at the same rate as the atrium. In AF, the AV node is activated at random intervals whenever an electrical impulse happens to reach it, leading to irregular contractions of the ventricles. One of the consequences for a heart in atrial fibrillation is the loss of the atrial kick. Atrial kick refers to the extra blood that is pushed into the ventricles on atrial contraction. This extra blood contributes significantly to the preload of the heart, increasing stroke volume by approximately 20%. As the atrium don't effectively contract in AF, this atrial kick is lost, reducing stroke volume. In an otherwise healthy individual, the cardiovascular system can compensate for this loss and maintain a healthy blood pressure. However, for someone already unwell, this loss of atrial kick can be significant. AF becomes more serious when it leads to a fast ventricular rate. The irregular electrical activity in the atrium can lead to the persistent stimulation of the ventricles. As a result, the ventricles have very little time to fill with blood between contractions, leading to a reduction in stroke volume. Fast AF can significantly reduce cardiac output and has the potential to be life-threatening if not treated. As the atrium don't effectively contract in AF, blood within the chambers can become stagnant, which can lead to the formation of blood clots. These clots can then migrate out of the heart and cause problems elsewhere in the body. The most common complication is for one of these blood clots to obstruct a blood vessel in the brain, leading to a stroke. AF significantly increases the risk of stroke. Sufferers will often be advised to take blood thinning medications such as warfarin to reduce the risk. On top of an increased risk of stroke, AF also significantly increases the likelihood of heart failure and dementia. If you want to learn more, I will put some further reading in the description below, as well as some links to other videos you might find useful. In the next video, we'll look at how we can identify atrial fibrillation on an ECG.